solely through your grace and mercy. Let us acknowledge the many gifts that God has bestowed upon us, starting with a president and vice president that reflect the values of our founding fathers and are willing to fight for those values, starting with life knowing that all life is precious from conception to natural death. There is no choice but to fight for the unborn. And for those of us who are true to our Catholic faith, we pray for an end of the intrinsic evil that is abortion. Lord, please give us the strength to fight for our religious freedom as our president does and instill in us a spirit and commitment to stand with the little sisters of the poor in their continued fight for religious freedom. We pray in thanksgiving for the members of our armed forces and their families who sacrifice greatly to ensure our sacred freedom that we all too often take for granted so that we can continue to live in the land of the free. And O oh Lord, we will be forever grateful that you have blessed this nation with great men and women that stand on the front line of law enforcement every day. We will not forget that we cannot be a great nation and serve you without the rule of law. We are all sinners and none of us are perfect. We recognize that faith is a journey. It's not where we start that journey, but where we are now and where we strive to be. Help us all follow President Trump, whose actions show he is on the journey to you, Lord. Let us not be deceived by those that were once close to you but have turned away in favor of embracing political ideology, yet claiming Catholic beliefs and words, while their actions turn them and their followers away from you. We pray that you change their hearts and bring them back to you. You have chosen us, O oh Lord. Yes, all of us gathered here today to make a difference in the world. Most of all, help us recognize that, you, that we are here through the mercy and grace of you, our Creator and that as Americans we are blessed and should be thankful every day for the gifts you have provided us. Please, Lord, continue to guide our party to the light, and we pray that those in the other party will turn away from the darkness and join us in our march to you, our Lord and Savior. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Now performing the national anthem, please give a warm welcome for Mary Milben. Notice that Republicans stand for the anthem.
Thank you, Mary. The chair now calls on the delegate from Alaska, Peter Goldberg, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh. Week before last, in the Democrat National Convention, we know that at least two caucuses removed two words under God from the Pledge of Allegiance. We know too that in a previous Democrat convention, a very recent one, the word God was almost totally removed from their platform. That could not, would not ever happen here. We know as Republicans that America must put its full trust and faith in that God in order to do so so that every American, every American citizen can have the blessings of security, the opportunities for prosperity, and the ability to enjoy all of those freedoms that are enshrined in that divinely inspired document, the Constitution of the United States of America. So as you join me in the pledge and render an appropriate salute, I ask you to remember that there is no comma before the words under God. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, 
indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Charlotte, North Carolina for the 2020 Republican Convention. I want to give an enormous thanks to our hosts, especially Charlotte Mayor Vi Lyles. We are obviously disappointed we could not hold this an event in the same way we had originally planned, but you and the city, of, the city and Mecklenburg County have been great partners and we are still so pleased we were able to re-nominate the president and vice president in the Queen City. Thank you, Mayor. I would also like to thank Marsha Lee Kelly, the president and CEO of the 2020 Republican National Convention and her entire team. They have worked so hard to make this event happen. Next, I would like to thank Tony Ann DeShiel, the chair of the RNC Committee on Arrangements and the members who served on the Committee on Arrangements. Tony Ann's leadership was indispensable on the committee and I would also like to thank all of our delegates alternates and guests who are not here with us today. Let us give a huge thanks to them for their service to our party. And thank you to all of you. We appreciate you and we're thrilled to be with you. I also want to thank our RNC co-chair Tommy Hicks who is my partner. For those of you who know Tommy, you know what a great person he is. He works day in and out to re-elect the president, and the committee is so lucky to have him as our co-chair. And then finally, I would like to thank my family, Patrick, Abigail, and Nash. As described in the Rule 37E National Convention Procedures and the Order of Business to enable the chair to be certain that any motion offered or any demand for a roll call has met the necessary requirements of the Rule 37E National Convention Procedures, the chair would like to put the delegates on notice that the chair must be provided in advance with satisfactory written support of the majority of the delegates from each of the necessary number of states required by the Rule 37E National Convention Procedures. This written confirmation is consistent with our modern practice and precedent during previous conventions with similar announcements. The 37E National Convention Procedures adhere as faithfully as possible to the spirit and letter of the RNC rules that govern the proceedings for a traditional convention whose principal purpose is to nominate the party's candidates for president and vice president of the United States and provide for the continued governance of the Republican Party's business affairs. Given these considerations, we will continue to follow precedent requiring the satisfac necessary sat satisfactory written support for any motion offered or any demand for a roll call. Also, the chair would like to remind all delegates that the Rule 37E National Convention procedures require that notification of evidence of written support necessary to present a name of a candidate for the nomination of the Office of President and Vice President of the United States must be submitted to the Secretary of the Convention no later than one hour prior to placing of the names of these candidates for nomination. For the avoidance of doubt, while the Rule 37E National Convention procedures utilize the existing RNC Rules 26 through 42 for convention proceedings whenever feasible, any modifications to the rules to govern the Rule 37E National Convention procedure shall apply only to the 2020 Rule 37E Convention and in no way should be interpreted as constituting permanent changes to the RNC rules. To the extent the Rule 37E National Convention procedures depart from the RNC rules, they do so by operation of 30, Rule 37E and the limitations imposed by that rule out of necessity, caused by the current emergency situation, and based on recognition that substantive changes to the RNC rules and Republican platform should be avoided in a non-traditional convention setting where fewer delegates will be deliberating and participating in person. And lastly, I also wish to remind any guests that participation in convention business is limited to delegates on the floor unless permission is granted. 
It is important that any guests in the gallery remain silent during voice, voice votes to ensure that the chair can hear the accurate result. The chair now recognizes Vicki Drummond, Secretary of the Convention, for the purpose of reading the call to convention. Please give her a warm welcome. Thank you. The call for the convention to the Republican voters in the United States of America. In accordance with the rules of the Republican Party adopted by the 2016 Republican National Convention on July 18, 2016 in Cleveland, Ohio, and as amended by the Republican National Committee on June 20, 2018 in Austin, Texas, the Republican National Committee hereby directs that a national convention of delegated representatives of the Republican Party be convened in Charlotte, North Carolina, no earlier than 8 o'clock a.m. and no later than 9 o'clock p.m. on Monday, August 24, 2020, except in the case of an emergency as set forth herein, and to continue thereafter from day to day for so long as may be necessary for the purpose of nominating candidates for president and vice president to be voted for at the presidential election on Tuesday, November 3, 2020 and for transaction of other such business as may properly come before it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Vicki. The chair now recognizes the delegate from Iowa for the purpose of making a motion. Madam Chair, I am Steve Scheffler, delegate from Iowa. I move that further reading of a call be dispensed with and that the secretary be instructed to complete the call at this point in the convention proceedings with the same force and effect as though read in full. The motion to dispense with the entire, with the reading of the entire call for the convention and that the call be made part of the permanent record of the convention has been moved by the delegate from Iowa. Is there a second? Jane Timken, delegate from Ohio, and I second the motion. The motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, the chair will call for a vote. All those in favor, signify, signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, signify by saying no. The ayes have it, and the motion is adopted. The chair rules that pursuant to the call in Rule 42 of the 37E National Convention Procedures is, as adopted by the Republican National Committee Executive Committee on June 10, 2020 and the Republican National Committee on August 22, 2020, the Rule 37E National Convention Procedures shall constitute the standing rules for the permanent proceedings of this Rule 37E Convention. Vicki Drummond, Secretary of the Republican National Committee, has presented to the chair the temporary role of delegates and alternates to the convention. The temporary role has been referred to the Committee on Credentials. The chair now recognizes the delegate from Illinois for the purpose of offering a resolution. Madam Chair, I'm Richard Porter, delegate from Illinois. I offer the following resolution. Resolved that the following committee is hereby appointed, a committee on credentials. This committee shall be entitled to consist of one man and one woman delegate from each state, American Samoa, the District of Columbia, Guam, the Northern Mariana Islands, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. The chairman and co-chairman of the committee, appointed by the chairman of the Republican National Committee, and the person selected by the various delegations whose names are filed with the secretary pursuant to Rule 41 and the Rule 37E National Convention Procedures shall constitute such said committee and the reading of the names of such persons shall be dispensed with and published in the proceedings of the convention. Madam Chair, I move the adoption of this resolution. 
The delegate from Illinois has made the motion to adopt the resolution. Is there a second? Madam Chair, I am Rosie Tripp, a delegate from New Mexico, and I second the motion. The motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, the chair will call for a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. The ayes have it, and the motion is adopted, and the committee has been appointed. The chair now calls on Doyle Webb, chairman of the Credentials Committee, Doyle here. Oh, here we go. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm Doyle Webb, RNC General Counsel and State Chairman for the great state of Arkansas and Chairman of the Convention Committee on Credentials. The Temporary Convention Committee on Credentials met yesterday afternoon to review delegate certification documentation submitted to the RNC Council's office. I now ask all members of the Convention Committee on Credentials to stand. And I ask the full convention to stand at ease while the Convention Committee on Credentials briefly convenes. I now call the Permanent Convention Committee of Credentials meeting to order. As a reminder, participation in Committee on Credentials business is for members of the Committee on Credentials only. Anyone who is not a member of the Convention Committee will not be recognized. The Permanent Convention Committee on Credentials will not consider certification, will now consider certification of the names of the delegates and alternate delegates as the permanent role of the convention. I will now recognize the delegate from Mississippi and co-chair of the Committee on Credentials for the purpose of a motion. Jeannie. Mr. Chairman, I am Jeannie Lucky, delegate from the great state of Mississippi. I move the temporary role of delegates and alternate delegates as presented to this committee be certified for approval by the full 37E National Convention as the permanent role of the 2020 Republican National Convention. The delegate from Mississippi has made the motion to certify the permanent role. Is there a second? I'm Jim Dickey from the state of Ohio, Mr. Chairman, and I second the motion. Thank you, Mr. Dickey. The motion has now been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, the chair will call for a vote. All those in favor, signify, signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it and the motion is adopted and the Convention Committee on Credentials has adopted its report. The committee may be seated Without objection, the committee is adjourned, and I will return the gavel to Chairwoman McDaniel. Thank you. Thank you, Doyle. Is there a motion to adopt the report of the Convention Committee on Credentials? Madam Chair, I move that we adopt the report of the Committee on Credentials. The motion has been made to adopt the report on the Co Committee on Credentials. Is there a second? Our delegate from Georgia, and I second the motion. The motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, the chair will call for a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. The ayes have it, and the motion is adopted. The temporary role is now the permanent role of delegates and alternate delegates of the 2020 Republican National Convention. If there is no objection, Staff will be allowed to make technical corrections to the permanent role as needed. The chair hears no objection and it is so ordered. Pursuant to Rule 41F of the Rule 37E National Convention Procedures, the chairman of the Republican National Committee shall select the officers of the Rule 37E Convention 
which will be voted on and adopted by the Rule 37E Convention. The list of Rule 37E Convention officers is included in the order of business and you have a copy in front of you. The chair now recognizes the delegate from Texas for the purpose of making a motion. Madam Chairman, I am Tony Ann DeShield, delegate from Texas. I move to adopt the list of the Rule 37E Convention officers selected by the Chairman of the Republican National Committee. Included on this list is the selection of the temporary Chairman of the Convention, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, and the permanent Chairman of the Convention, Republican Leader Kevin McCarthy. The delegate from Texas has made the motion to adopt the list of the Rule 37E National Convention officers. Is there a second? I am Ron Kaufman, delegate from Massachusetts, and I second the motion of the distinguished delegate from Texas. The motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, the chair will call for a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed signify by saying no. The ayes have it, and the motion is adopted. The temporary officers have been made permanent Rule 37E National Convention officers. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to introduce the Republican leader of the United States House of Representatives and permanent chairman of the convention, Kevin McCarthy. Thank you all very much. You're very kind. First of all, let's give a big round of applause for Ronna McDaniel. Isn't she doing an amazing job? You know, I'll give a little note to her because when I first took over as leader in Congress, it was 19 seats we'd need to retire Nancy Pelosi. Today it's 17. We did something you had not done. We got a Democrat to re-register as a Republican. And you know one thing that we also did, and I want to give a big shout out to California and Jessica, we did something we had not done in 22 years. We took a Democrat seat in California and made it Republican. So it's good to be with so many friends. I thank you for your help. I got a lot of former colleagues in here. It's always great to see Christy Nome, one of the greatest governors in, in the entire country here in South Dakota. So great to have you with us. Now let's move on to our next item on the order of business. Pursuant to Rule 41E of the Rule 37E National Convention Procedures, the Convention Committee on the Rules and Order of Business will not convene during the Rules 37E Convention Proceedings. The only motion to amend the rules that will be deemed in order is a motion to make a technical correction to Rule 12 by removing the reference of the year 2018. The red line version of the technical correction is on the screen. Pursuant to Rule 37E, National Convention Procedures, the motion to adopt this technical correction shall not be subject to any amendment and any motion to suspend the procedures in order to make any other rule amendment shall not be in order. Apart from this specific change made through a motion adopted pursuant to Rule 41E, we will adjourn today with the rules of the Republican Party in the same form as amended by the Republican National Committee on July 20th, 2018 as the official rules of the Republican Party. The rules will be considered adopted as of today, the rules of the Republican Party as adopted by the 2020 Republican National Convention, August 24, 2020. The chair now recognizes the delegate from Washington for the purpose of making a motion. Mr. Chairman, I am Jeff Kent, delegate from Washington State. Under the emergency procedures set forth under Rule 37E, we will not be adopting an updated version of the rules of the Republican Party until the next convention in 2024. However, the Republican National Committee should retain the ability to update the rules as needed. Therefore, I move to strike the following clause from Rule 12. Quote, 
no such amendment shall be adopted after September 30th, 2018, unquote, and replace it with, quote, no such amendment shall be adopted after September 30th, two years prior to the year in which the next national convention is to be held. The delegate from Washington has made the motion to adopt a technical correction to Rule 12, the rules of the Republican Party. Is there a second? Mr. Chairman, my name is Peter Goldberg. I'm from the largest state in the Union, the great land of Alaska, and I second Mr. Kent's motion. The motion has been made. The second. Is there any discussion? Hearing no further discussion, the chair will call for a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted, and the cor technical correction to RNC Rule 12 has been adopted. The chair now recognizes the delegate from District of Columbia for the purpose of offering a resolution. Mr. Chairman, I am Jill Homan, delegate from the District of Columbia, and I offer the following resolution. Resolved that those elected as members of the Republican National Committee under the procedures of each state, American Samoa, the District of Columbia, Guam, Puerto Rico, and the Northern Mariana Islands whose names have been submitted to the Secretary of the Convention are hereby declared ratified to serve as members of the Republican National Committee from the adjournment of this Republican National Convention until the successor committee has been ratified by the next Republican National Convention. Mr. Chairman, I move the adoption of the resolution. The delegate from the District of Columbia has made the motion to adopt the resolution. Is there a second? I thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is John Fry. I'm a delegate from Connecticut, and I second the motion. The motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, the chair will call for a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed signify by saying nay. The opinion of the chair is the ayes have it, and the motion is adopted. I congratulate each of you on your election. The chair now recognizes the delegate. You can applaud that. That's all right. We can be excited. The chair now recognizes the delegate from Michigan for the purpose of offering a resolution. Mr. Chairman, I'm Laura Cox, delegate from Michigan, and I offer the following resolution. Resolve that the Secretary of the Convention is hereby directed to prepare and publish for the Convention a full and complete report of its official proceedings under the direction of the Republican National Committee and is authorized to make all necessary clerical and grammatical corrections and to make technical and conforming amendments as necessary in reports, motions, and resolutions considered by the convention to reflect its actions. Mr. Chairman, I move the adoption of this resolution. The delegate of Michigan has made the motion to adopt the resolution. Is there a second? Mr. Chairman, I am Andrew Hitt, delegate of Wisconsin, and I second the motion. The motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing no further discussion, I will call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed, nay. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the motion is adopted. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for us to determine our nominee for the office of the Vice President of the United States. The chair states that in compliance with Rule 40B, the chair has been furnished with evidence that a plurality of delegates from each of five or more states severely support the candidate who will be presented for the nomination for the Vice President of the United States. The chair would like to remind delegates of the provision of Rule 40A, which provide in part that if there is only one candidate for nomination for Vice President of the United States who has demonstrated the support required by paragraph B of this rule, a motion to nominate for such office by acclamation shall be in order and no calling of the roll with respect to such office shall be required. At this time, the chair states that he has been furnished with evidence that there is only one candidate for the nomination for the office of the Vice President of the United States who has demonstrated the support required under Rule 40B of the Rules of the Convention. 
And finally, pursuant to Rule 37E, National Convention procedures nominating and seconding speeches will be limited to three minutes each. It has also been the custom at past conventions to permit the chair to recognize non-delegates for the purpose of making nominations and seconding speeches. The chair now recognizes Governor Scott Walker from the state of Wisconsin for the purpose of nominating. Please give him a warm applause and welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, it is my honor to nominate our friend, Michael R. Pence, to serve as the Republican Party's 2020 candidate for Vice President of these United States of America. <laughs> Delegates and alternates, pursuant to Rule 40A, a motion to nominate by acclamation is in order. The chair now recognizes Kyle Humphrey from the delegate from Indiana. Mr. Chairman, I move that Vice President Michael R. Pence from the great state of Indiana be nominated by acclamation by this Republican National Convention as its candidate for the office of Vice President of the United States of America. The motion to nominate Michael R. Pence by acclamation has been made by the delegate from Indiana. Is there a second? Mr. Chairman, I am Ann Hathaway, delegate from Indiana, and I second the motion. <laughs> the motion has been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Any opposed? And hearing no one opposed, the ayes have it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, delegates and guests, I am proud to announce the Vice President, Michael R. Pence, has the unanimous support of this convention to be the Republican Party's nominee for the office of Vice President of the United States of America. Without objection, I will turn things back to this amazing chairwoman, Ronna McDaniel. Please join me in welcoming back on stage. Thank you, Leader McCarthy, and how exciting that we have nominated Mike Pence once again to be the Vice President of the United States of America. <laughs> Delegates, this is a historic moment as we make official the nomination of Donald Trump and Mike Pence as our nominees for President and Vice President of the United States. Today's events reflect the unified support the Trump-Pence ticket has from Republicans along with independents and discerning Democrats all across America. Our party is unified, our supporters are energized, and now we will go forward confident in our cause of re-electing President Trump and Vice President Pence in 70 days from now. Now I know, I know that I am not alone when I say that the Democrats' convention last week was hard to watch. I know we all ate this morning, but you know. Um, it was depressing, doom and gloom, night after night. It was short on substance, but it was a masterpiece in fiction about President Trump's record and what he has accomplished for the American people. Democrats were telling the truth about one thing, though. We are at a crossroads as a nation. I never thought, I never thought, I would agree with Hillary Clinton, but she is right about one thing. We have to vote like our lives and our country depend on it this November. 
Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are running on the most radical, socialist, extreme, far-left ticket in American history. Policies that would have been unthinkable a decade ago, banning fossil fuels, eliminating private health insurance, taxpayer-funded health care for people who come here illegally, and defunding the police are now mainstream in the Democrat Party. Their argument for Joe Biden boiled down to the fact that they think he's a nice guy. Well, let me tell you, raising taxes on 82% of the American people is not nice. Eliminating 10 million good paying oil and gas jobs and raising gas and heating prices on American families is not nice. Policies that force jobs to flee our country or allow abortion up until the point of birth are not nice. The truth is, the truth is there's only one person who has empathized with everyday Americans and actually been fighting for them every single day over the past four years, and that is President Donald J. Trump. Over the next four days, President Trump and Republicans are going to talk about all that we have achieved the past four years and cast an aspirational, forward-looking vision about what we can achieve in the next four. Our convention is going to feature hardworking, everyday Americans, not Hollywood celebrities, who are going to help tell the great American story and how President Trump's policies have made their lives better. Policies like cutting taxes and rolling back job-killing regulations, creating over 9,000 opportunity zones in all 50 states, and fighting for school choice, rebuilding the military and securing our southern border, including nearly 300 miles of border wall. Yes, he is building that wall. Negotiating freer, fairer trade deals like the USMCA, appointing constitutional conservatives to the federal bench, over 200 of them, including Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh, <laughs> ushering in a new era of American energy independence and taking out terrorists like al-Baghdadi and General Soleimani. <laughs> and brokering a landmark peace agreement between Israel and the United, United Arab Emirates. <laughs> Fellow Republicans, as we reflect on the crossroads we are at this November, we can look to the words of our first Republican president, Abraham Lincoln, for guidance. Lincoln cautioned that country, his countrymen that if America was, America was to suffer the familiar fate of so many nations and empires throughout history, the cause of our downfall would not come from abroad, but from within. Lincoln wrote, if destruction be our lot, we ourselves must be its author. He warned of the increasing disregard for law, substituting wild passions in place of sober judgment and the danger posed by savage mobs. Abraham Lincoln could just as easily be writing these words today. We see the chaos playing out in places like Portland, Seattle, Chicago, New York, and other Democrat-run cities across the country. We see suppression of free speech, mob rule instead of the rule of law, elected officials putting politics ahead of public safety. These images are just a preview of what would happen nationwide if Joe Biden and Kamala Harris win this election. It does not have to be that way. Donald Trump will always stand for the rule of law. Donald Trump will defend our fundamental freedoms, preserve our American way of life, and work day and night to build our economy back to the historic levels of growth.
has been doing all that and more for the past four years, and he will do it as president in the next four when the American people reelect him to a second term. Thank you all. God bless you. God bless the United States of America. Let's win November 3rd. Let's reelect President Trump. Let's keep the Senate and let's take back the House. So, some of you may have figured out we may be having some special guests come today. You know, just, just a few, I don't know. Uh, so at this time, the chair would ask that without objection, the convention will stand in recess until the call of the chair. The chair here knows objection and the convention is in recess until the call of the chair. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, we have recessed but will return shortly. Please remain nearby until we resume.
The chair wishes to inform the delegates that it has been furnished in a timely manner, evidence of sufficient support of the candidate who will be presented for President of the United States in compliance with the rules of the convention. As a reminder, nominating and seconding speeches will be limited to three minutes each without objection. The reading of the roll call of states for presenting the names for candidates for nomination is dispensed with, and non-delegates should be permitted, permitted to make nominating and seconding speeches. The chair now recognizes the delegate and state chairman of the North Carolina Republican Party, Michael Watley, for the purpose of nominating. Please give him a warm welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair. It is my distinct honor as the chairman of the North Carolina Republican Party to welcome you, President Trump, Vice President Pence, and all of our assembled delegates to the old North State. Four years ago in Cleveland, Donald J. Trump accepted the Republican nomination for president and promised to build a stronger America both here and abroad. Since winning the 2016 election in historic fashion, President Trump has worked relentlessly every single day to keep his promises to the American people. He has built the strongest economy in U.S. history by enacting record-setting tax cuts, dramatically cutting red tape and bringing manufacturing back to America. Promise made, promise kept. He has rebuilt the American Armed Forces, supported our military families, and honored our veterans. Promise made, promise kept. He has reshaped the federal judiciary by nominating over 200 conservative federal judges, including Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh, to the Supreme Court. Promise made, promise kept. And he has put America first by standing up to China and negotiating treaties like the USMCA and Phase One China trade deal, which treat American farmers, manufacturers, and small businesses fairly. Promise made, promise kept. I would submit to this convention that no president has done more for the American people in his first four years than President Donald J. Trump. <laughs> Madam Chair, as we look at the challenges that America will face over the next four years, it is crystal clear that we need a leader who has the strength to fight for every American every day. When it comes to this election, there is only one choice for America. Only President Trump will eradicate the coronavirus and rebuild our economy. Only President Trump will end our reliance on China and bring manufacturing jobs back to America. Only President Trump will provide school choice to every American child. Only President Trump will ensure that law enforcement is fully funded and protect the Second Amendment. Only President Trump will finish building the wall, protect our borders, and dismantle human trafficking networks. And only President Trump has the strength to lead our country through our great challenges so that every American can have the chance to live the American dream. Madam Chair, it is my honor and great pleasure to nominate Donald J. Trump for the office of President of the United States of America. the delegate and state chairman from the president's home state of Florida, Joe Gruders. Madam Chairwoman, I am Joe Gruders, chairman from the great state of Florida, which is not only the most politically important state of the country, it's also home to the 45th president of the United States of America, Donald J. Trump. I rise today to second the nomination of the economic heavyweight champion of the world, Donald J. Trump, to be the Republican nominee for president. 
Who better to lead our country out of the economic impacts that we face as a result of the Wuhan virus than the president who has already delivered us record low unemployment for African Americans, for Hispanics, for Asian Americans, for women, and for Americans without college degrees. Under President Trump's watch, excessive regulations that once stifled job growth have been eliminated. Jobs that have once been shipped overseas are returning to our shores. 401ks that are, have been down in the dumps, thriving. President Trump also knows that we are the land of the free because of, of the brave. That's why he has put record investments in the military. He's modernized the VA. He supported every single one of our troops. And he isn't defunding the police, he is defending the police. <laughs> America. Americans want to be able Americans want to be able to earn an honest living, have a good pay, and want to be able to practice religion that they choose. They want to go to school without being indoctrinated. They respect the flag and our founding fathers. They want an operator at the other end of that 911 call. They want jobs, not mobs. They want sanity, not leftist insanity. And they want American first policies, not American last policies. They want American pride, not American shame. And they want American hope, not American decline. And because of his pro-American agenda and his love for America as we know it, it is an honor for me and for America's benefit that I second the nomination of Donald J. Trump for a second term to the office of President of the United States of America. convention procedures during the roll call, the states will be called in alphabetical order. Without objection, the state of Florida may cast its vote out of order. During the roll call, the chairs of each respective delegation or their designee will announce the vote of each state. During the roll call of the states, the secretary will announce each state its total number of available votes and the number of votes bound to each candidate. As required by Rule 37C, no delegation will be recognized to change its vote until all delegations who have passed have been given a second opportunity to vote. Without objection, non-delegates shall be permitted to announce the vote for a state delegation. Additionally, the chair would like to remind all delegates that the secretary is required under Robert's Rules of Order, newly revised, and the rules of the Republican Party to announce and record delegates' votes in accordance with the obligations under Rule 16 of the Rules of the Republican Party state law or state party rule to reflect the voters' preferences in each state. The official results from each state are those announced by the secretary. The chair wishes to announce that if a delegate requests a poll to be taken of their delegation under Rule 37, the secretary will send representatives of the convention to supervise the polling of the delegation. After the poll is completed, the results will be delivered to the secretary, and the secretary shall announce the result at the end of the roll call of states in accordance with Rule 37E National Convention procedures. Lastly, I wish to remind our delegates that maintaining order during the roll is extremely important. If the convention is not in order, it is difficult for the secretary or presiding officer to hear the vote announcement or otherwise acknowledge delegates seeking recognition. Now, delegates, let us commence with the call of the roll call of the states. Please welcome back to the stage Secretary of the Convention, Vicki Drummond. Thank you, Madam Chair. We will now begin the roll call of the states. First up, Alabama. Alabama, 50 delegates with the following bound delegates. 50, President Donald Trump. I'm Representative Andrew Sorrell, 
chairman of the delegation from the Yellowhammer State, the state with the highest approval rating in the country for Donald Trump, home of the Crimson Tide, the Auburn Tigers, and Trump-endorsed coach Tommy Tuberville, who we plan to send to Washington, D.C. this November to take back our Senate seat from our caretaker Democrat senator. From the music of Muscle Shoals to the shipbuilding of Mobile and the white sandy beaches of the Gulf Coast. From the rockets and defense industry of Huntsville to the auto manufacturing of Montgomery and Tuscaloosa, this state strongly supports our president and his policies. Alabama's motto is, we dare defend our rights. This president has defended our borders, defended our religious liberty, cut our taxes, and repealed the Obamacare individual mandate. Today, it is my honor to announce that Alabama has unanimously cast its 50 delegates' votes for President Donald J. Trump. Pursuant to the announcement of the delegation and the rules and procedures of this convention, Alabama cast 50 votes, Donald Trump. Alaska, 29 delegates with the following band for, for uh, President Donald Trump, 26. Madam Chairman, Madam Secretary, Alaska, the largest state in our union, known as the Great Land, has more rivers, lakes, streams, coastline, glaciers, volcanoes, mountains, islands, and wildlife than the entire lower 48 states combined. Alaska's abundant natural resources are responsibly developed and harvested, preserving the pristine land and waters of the last frontier. Alaska is a land of promise, peoples, prosperity, personal responsibility, individual freedoms, and opportunities. To keep Alaska great and to keep America great, the Alaska Republican delegation proudly cast its 29 votes to nominate President Donald J. Trump. Pursuant to the announcement of the delegation and the rules and procedures of this convention, Alaska, 29 votes, President Donald Trump. American Samoa, nine delegates with the following band delegates, nine for President Trump. Talofa from the territory of American Samoa where we produce more NFL football players and military members than anywhere in the United States. <laughs> Madam Secretary, the territory of American Samoa is proud to cast all of our nine votes for our awesome and fearless President Donald J. Trump. Faftai. Pursuant to the announcement of the delegation and the rules and procedures of this convention, American Samoa, nine votes, President Trump. Arizona. <clears throat> 50 delegates with the following band delegates. 57 delegates, President Donald Trump. Madam Secretary, I'm Michael Ward, Chairman of the Arizona Delegation, home of the London Bridge, home of the Grand Canyon, home of World War II heroes, the Navajo Code Talkers. And thanks to our excellent President, the land of growing opportunity zones, economic security, law and order, education choice, where unborn babies matter, a flattened China plague curve, and miles and miles and miles of big, beautiful wall. <laughs> Madam Secretary, in order to keep America first, 
the state of Arizona casts our 57 votes for President Donald J. Trump. Pursuant to the announcement of the delegation and the rules and procedures of this convention, Arizona, 57 votes, President Donald Trump. Arkansas, 40 delegates with the following band delegates. 40 delegates, President Donald Trump. Madam Secretary, Arkansas, the natural state, the reddest state not only in the South, but in the entire nation. The home of Johnny Cash of country music fame and Daisy Bates, civil rights leader to the Little Rock Nine, both of whom will be memorialized in the U.S. Capitol. The number one producer of rice, 49% of the nation's rice is raised by Arkansas farmers. The world shops at Arkansas-based Walmart and dines on Tyson Foods. As Arkansas and travelers fl flood to the National Buffalo River on a daily basis, they also dig for diamonds at the nation's only diamond mine. Arkansas, the state that gave Donald J. Trump a 30% margin of victory over former resident Crooked Hillary, and will do so again over the radical Democratic ticket that has emerged out of the D.C. swamp. Arkansas proudly cast its 40 votes for Donald J. Trump. Pursuant to the announcement of the delegation and the rules and procedures of this convention, Arkansas cast 40 votes, President Donald Trump. <laughs> California, 172 delegates with the following down, bound delegates. 172, President Trump. On behalf of House Republican leader, Congressman Kevin McCarthy, our National Committee woman, Harmeet Dillon, our National Committee men, Sean Steele, and over five million registered Republicans from Siskiyou County down to San Diego and everywhere in between. I am California Republican Party Chairwoman Jessica Milan Patterson. We, as a state, want to bring forth our delegates, 172 for Donald Trump. Pursuant to the announcement of the delegation and the rules and procedures of this, of this convention, California cast 172 votes for President Trump. Colorado, 30, 37 delegates with the following band delegates. 37, President Trump. Madam Secretary, in the past four years, President Trump and Vice President Pence have made America great again in the eyes of the world so that now our friends respect us and our enemies fear us. They've given Americans great job opportunities with free trade agreements that are fair. They've appointed justices and judges who interpret the law and don't legislate from the bench. They've created the greatest economic expansion in decades that lifted all Americans. They protected us from a worldwide pandemic. They've enacted tax cuts because Americans spend their money more wisely than the government. The great state of Colorado, home of U.S. Senator Cory Gardner, headquarters to the Bureau of Land Management and the United States Space Command, proudly cast all 37 votes to keep America great again for President Donald Trump and Vice President Mike Pence. Pursuant to the announcement of the delegation and the rules and procedures of this convention, Colorado cast 37 votes, President Donald Trump. <laughs> Connecticut. 
Connecticut, 28 delegates with the following bound delegates. 28, President Donald Trump. Madam Secretary, I'm Leora Levy, National Committee Woman from Connecticut. Connecticut, the nutmeg state, the Constitution state, and the arsenal of democracy. Also home to the champion Huskies women's and men's basketball teams. Connecticut proudly carries the legacy of self-government even before the American Revolution through the Ch Connecticut Charter granted by King Charles in 1662. When King James tried to revoke it in 1687, Connecticut leaders, through sleight of hand, hid it in the Charter Oak in Hartford, Connecticut for two years until it safely reemerged in 1689 to enable Connecticut to continue self-governance. Today, as a proud and independent nutmegger, I proudly cast 28 spicy votes for President Donald J. Trump and American greatness. Pursuant to the announcement of the delegation and the rules and procedures of this convention, Connecticut cast 28 votes Donald Trump. Delaware, 16 delegates with the following bound delegates. 16, President Trump. Madam Secretary, it was a dark and stormy night, July 1, 1776, when Caesar Rodney rode his horse from Dover to Philadelphia to break the tie that was preventing the colonies from declaring independence. Two days later, the declaration was signed. On December 7, 1787, Delaware became the first state to ratify the United States Constitution. From Delaware, the great state, the first state. The, from that great beginning, the greatness that will be ours in the future, we nominate President Donald J. Trump and cast all 16 of our delegate votes for Donald J. Trump. Pursuant to the announcement of the delegation and the rules and procedures of this convention, Delaware cast 16 votes President Trump. The District of Columbia, 19 delegates with the following bound delegates. 19, President Trump. Madam Secretary, in 1855, the Washington, D.C. Republican Party was founded on principles of abolition of slavery and promotion of liberty. We are proud to call the late civil rights hero, Frederick Douglass, a former member and precinct captain. To carry on that legacy today, we are proud to cast all 19 votes for Donald J. Trump. Pursuant to the announcement of the delegation and the rules and procedures of this convention, the District of Columbia, 19 votes, President Trump. Georgia. 76 delegates with the following bound delegates. 76 delegates, President Trump. Madam Secretary, from the Golden Isles to the top of Lookout Mountain, the great state of Georgia, home to Governor Brian Kemp and our senior United States Senator David Perdue, is proud to cast every single of its 76 votes for the renomination of President Donald J. Trump. Pursuant to the announcement of the delegation and the rules and procedures of the convention, Georgia cast 76 votes for, Donald, for President Donald Trump. Guam, nine delegates with the following bound delegates. Nine votes, President Trump. Madam Secretary, 
a warm half a day from the U.S. territory of Guam, homeland of the Chamorro people, Tano y Man Chamorro, where all are welcome regardless of your race, creed, and national origin. We would like to express our sincere gratitude, Sijus Maase, to President Donald Trump for making sure that the people of Guam are treated as equal members of our great nation, especially with the federal relief that has been provided to the territory during this global pandemic. So use Massey President Trump in providing closure to the Chamorro people that suffered horrible atrocities during the three years Japanese occupation of our island during World War II. We raise our voices and pray to Our Lady of Camelin, Santa Maria Camelin, the patron saint of our island, to bless President Donald Trump and bless President Mike Pence in this up election. Madam Secretary, the territory of Guam is proud to cast its nine votes for President Donald J. Trump. Pursuant to the announcement of the delegation and the rules and procedures of this convention, Guam cast all nine votes for President Trump. Hawaii, Night <laughs> 19 delegates with the following, <clears throat> excuse me, with the following bound delegates. 19 delegates, President Donald Trump. <clears throat> Aloha mai kako. Madam Secretary, I speak to you in behalf of Republicans in the Democrat-controlled state of Hawaii. While we are the Aloha State, it is the safest, healthiest, and happiest state in the Union. We can only attribute this to the great weather and wonderful people that make up our great state of Hawaii. Madam Secretary, we cannot attribute any of Hawaii's success or attractive qualities to the 60 years of failed leadership by Hawaii Democrats. Despite Democrat control and Democrat subversion in Hawaii, President Trump's leadership has helped Hawaii survive and prosperous in difficult times. Hawaii and the nation need four more years of President Trump, so I proudly cast all 19 of his votes for the re-election of Donald J. Trump. Pursuant to the announcement of the delegation and the rules and procedures of this convention, Hawaii cast 19 votes for President Trump. <clears throat> Idaho, 32 delegates with the following bound delegates. 32, President Trump. Madam Secretary, on behalf of Idaho, the gem state, and all of our happy people and the hardworking, beautiful people there, encompassed by the Rocky Mountains, where people love the fish, the land, the wildlife, and the water, a people focused on God, family, country, and our sacred Second Amendment, and along with all of our other individual liberties. And because of those important and in defense of those individual liberties, I am proud to cast all of Idaho's votes, 32 votes, to Donald John Trump. Pursuant to the announcement of the delegation and the rules and procedures of this convention, Idaho cast 32 votes for President Trump. Illinois, 67 delegates with the following bound delegates. 67, President Trump. Greetings to you all. Home of the first Republican president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, and the birthplace of Ronald Reagan. I proudly cast 67 votes for our president and the next president of the United States, Donald J. Trump.
Pursuant to the announcement of the delegation and the rules and the procedures of this convention, Illinois cast 67 votes for President Trump. Indiana. <laughs> 58 delegates with the following bound delegates. 58, President Donald Trump. Madam Secretary, I'm Kyle Hupfer, the Indiana Republican Party Chairman. The Hoosier State is proud this morning. Proud on the day after the 104th running of the Indianapolis 500 to be the global capital of racing. Proud to produce the best basketball in the world with legends like Larry Bird, Oscar Robertson, and Bobby Knight. Proud to have one of the strongest and most popular state leaders in the country and our governor, Eric Holcomb. Proud that Indiana was first on the board in 2016 for our president, Donald J. Trump. But what we are most proud of today is that Indiana's own Michael R. Pence has been nominated as Vice President of the United States of America. This November, Indiana will once again be the first state called to keep the Trump-Pence administration in the White House for four more years. Indiana is proud to cast all of our 58 votes to keep America great again by unanimously supporting Donald J. Trump for President of the United States of America. Pursuant to the announcement of the delegation and the rules and the regulation of this convention, Indiana cast 58 votes President Trump. Iowa, 40 delegates with the following bound delegates. 40 for President Trump. Thank you, Madam M. Secretary. Mr. President, first of all, on behalf of all Iowans, our deepest symp sympathies and condolences to you and the first family for the loss of your brother, Robert. May his memory be eternal, sir. As you know, Iowa on August 10th experienced a devastating derecho storm, but Iowans are resilient. We thank you and our representatives for the swift, decisive, and continued action, which was done in record speed. Mr. President, I'm a CEO and entrepreneur. On election night in 2016, I had 400 employees. Today, we have almost 4,000. Thanks to you. Thanks to your explosive economic policies. In short, sir, you're crushing it. With that said, the most enthusiastic state chairman and all of the GOP, Jeff Kaufman, and I are honored to report that on behalf of our widely popular governor, Kim Reynolds, Senator Grassley, Senator Joni Ernst, our 40 delegates, and our amazing congressional ticket, Ashley Henson, Marionette Miller Meeks, David Young, and Randy Feenstra, that the great state of Iowa fully sends, full send, unanimously, all of our votes to renominate you to lead our country, America, under God for four more years. Mr. President and Mr. Er, Vice President, you're rehired. Pursuant to the announcement of the delegation and the rules and the procedures of this convention, Iowa cast 40 votes, President Trump. Kansas, 39 delegates with the following bound delegates. 39, President Trump. Madam Secretary, on behalf of the great state of Kansas, the wheat state, where as our great country is celebrating the centennial of women's right to vote, in Kansas we celebrate that Kansas Republicans were electing Republican women to office before there was a 19th Amendment. On behalf of our farmers and our ranchers who feed the world and produce the most wheat of any state in our country, on behalf of those that participate in the air capital, Kansas, and where aviation pioneer 
Amelia Earhart was a resident. Thank you, President Trump, for making America great and making Kansas great. Madam Secretary, Kansas is proud to cast its vote, all 39 votes, for President Donald J. Trump. Pursuant to the announcement of the delegation and the rules and procedures of the convention, Kansas cast 39 votes, President Trump. <laughs> Kentucky. Kentucky, 46 delegates with the following bound delegates. 46, President Trump. 